Hello, welcome to the One Life Church devotional series. We cover the entire Bible in 20 months. Well, today's chapters of Proverbs chapter 4 and Hebrews 9. I'm still here pushing uh, through uh, in Pumalanga province. And I'm uh, in front of a barn here, an old barn on a farm. And we'll get to that in a moment. Now, our friend Luke asked this question of Proverbs 4. How much does wisdom cost you? And how do you go about getting wisdom? Because surely God just gives wisdom to some people and some people are, are not very wise. Well, uh, let's have a look at the difference between knowledge, understanding and wisdom because they connect it. Now, you can get knowledge by reading a lot of stuff, exposing yourself to a lot of stuff, but you might not be wise. You might have a lot of head knowledge. And so knowledge is like the accumulation of facts. Understanding is the interpretation of those facts, making sense of them. So you, you understand what you're looking at. You understand the information that's coming into your mind. But wisdom is the application of that understanding. So in other words, it's able to take what you've seen, you understand it, and then the ability to apply it. Now, that's a costly exercise. So Luke asked the question, how, what's it going to cost you? Well, it's going to cost you to put aside all your other preconceived ideas, take what you've learned, and apply it. It's, it's not going to be an easy life. It says here, though it costs you all you have, costs, costs, costs you all your ideas, costs you, um, you're putting aside everything else you've known because now you've got a, a, a fresh understanding that you're going to apply. Your life's going to go that way. It says, and this is what will happen. Uh, you, it's going to lead you on straight paths. You will not stumble. You won't be robbed of sleep. And, and so now if you, ask well how does this process work he, he basically says in this proverb put the word in you get knowledge into you and where are you going to get that word from get it from a godly father yes get it from the word of god absolutely get the word into you and then it says guard your heart in other words as it's in your heart let it mull over there guard your heart guard your mouth don't be too quick to speak until you've understood it and how to apply it, don't be too quick to speak and, and guard what you're looking at. Because what you're looking at is going to affect what's coming into you. And also what you're looking at is going to shape how you adjust yourself. And so it's a fascinating chapter. It says this, for above all else, guard your heart because everything else flows from it. As you absorb knowledge, get an understanding and get a will to apply it it's it's a it's a great chapter now hebrews chapter 9 once more looks at the earthly temple the earthly worship the earthly tab the structure of the tabernacle with the holy place the most holy place all the artifacts and so on uh, and and basically says this is a picture now i'm sitting here in front of a barn it tells a story doesn't it there's an old grain mill there there's a uh, there's a bunch of old equipment there. It tells a story of what happens on this little sheep farm. Right now, I see a father and a son walking with the sheep over a mountain there. Uh, I'm wondering why they're not on a horse. I'm wondering why they're not on a tractor. Um, but, but all these things, the way this place is set up, tells a story. Now, basically, in Hebrews 9, uh, we, we see that the writer says this. The Holy Spirit, in verse 8, was showing by this that the way to the most holy place had not yet been disclosed as long as the first tabernacle was still in existence. And so it says, this is an illustration for our present time. So it's basically saying, when you looked at the temple and the priests and all the artifacts, it told a story. It told a story and it painted a picture of something that was to come. And so, so then he says, verse 11, but when Christ came as a high priest, this picture now is redundant. Now we've got a reality itself. And this is the big point that he's getting to, verse 15. For this reason, Christ is a mediator of the new covenant. And so you can look at these pictures all you like, but this is the reason. Jesus comes down to earth. He represents all of mankind as a mediator. So a mediator is someone who acts as someone in between. So Jesus was acting in between us and God, the true tabernacle, the true temple. So on earth, these priests were our mediator. 
on earth. They were they were scrubbing around in the dust and they were killing bulls and goats. And they, and the, on earth, they were the mediator, the go-between between between us and God. But now Jesus comes, and He is the true mediator. He's that's why He became human, so He could identify with us, and He mediated a new covenant, the one that we read about yesterday. And basically, this this chapter is saying this is the whole point of it. We have a mediator now, a permanent one, a one who's not flawed, one who's not shaken, and he engages with God on our behalf. That's why it says, that's why John says, I, speaking of Jesus, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one gets to the Father but by me. I am the mediator.